Hi, my name is Allie Hilfiger, and I'm a chronic Lyme survivor and the author of the book, Bite Me. Um, my story is not like, unlike many others. However, it is a long and grueling experience as I was bit by a tick when I was seven years old and not diagnosed until I was 19 years old. I went through um, a lot of my childhood with severe pain, both physical and emotional. Most of it started in my knees. Um, when I was seven years old, we had just come back from a vacation somewhere on the East Coast, and my mother found a tick and she got it tested, which was more than most mothers would have done in the 90s. And the, the results were inconclusive. And she was a bit confused by those results, but what are you gonna do? That's what the doctor tells you. So she sent me back to school in first grade and I had a lot of, like I said, it started in my knees. So I kept bending my knees a lot and moving them out of stiffness and it grew on to strep throats, severe fatigue, the pain moved up into my hips and into my neck. I had migraines. I wasn't able to get out of bed. Um, and then it became more neurological. And my ability to focus and read and retain information was lacking and decreasing at a rapid speed that no one could understand, except for to chalk it up to ADD and learning, learning disabilities. Um, I was a very bright child, a very energetic child. I had a lot to offer. I was interested in acting. Um, I didn't love sports, but I did them. Um, but there were times where I had fainting spells or uh, heart palpitations, etc. The brain function and the joint pain were the two things that we started to notice in a really, really major way. So. Fast forward to 13 years old when I got into a snowboarding accident and I dislocated my right hip. After that is when the symptoms started to really increase and become even more neurological. Uh, shooting pains down my legs and arms and my back, um, migraines that would put me into bed for, for days. and. Um, you know, again, the ability, the inability to read, retain information was just embarrassing. Then I started to experience when I was 16 years old, which I know is normal for many 16 year olds as well, but severe anxiety attacks that would put me into emergency rooms. And there was one so severe that they said if they hadn't called the paramedics sooner that I might have very well had a heart attack. So there were, there were little things happening and no one really knew why. I was sent to a lot of doctors and specialists. Some people said it was rheumatoid arthritis. Some people said it was multiple sclerosis. Some people said it was fibromyalgia. Some people said it was anxiety disorder. Some people said it was learning disability and I needed to take antidepressants and exercise more. So it was very confusing. All the while they had done many Lyme tests. And the tests that they gave me came back either on the borderline, meaning I was missing only one out of like the 10 bands or the five bands that you have to have, or some of them would be negative, but with enough titers nowadays that would point to Lyme. And the doctors just weren't as educated as you would have hoped. And my parents didn't know anything about Lyme disease really. And you know, I lived in an area where it was running rampant. So I just went along with my life and didn't think anything of it. I just kept, I worked, I was working as a teenager. I was acting on off an off-Broadway play. I was producing film and television. Um, at one point I started a TV show with MTV and during the filming, I noticed that my ability to understand what people were saying was getting more difficult and my ability to process information and, and word retrieval became very, very difficult for me. And the feeling of being overwhelmed and overridden with anxiety and panic with no apparent reason was coming over me. It, it was embarrassing and, you know, being filmed for a, a TV show that does not have a script and there was no direction or scripts back then. Um, I just had to fight through it and I would cry myself to sleep at night. Um, and you know, smoked marijuana for sure because it helped with all the symptoms of inc increased nausea and joint pain. 
Um, but of course, smoking weed on top of being sick doesn't make you better. So it was, it was a very difficult journey to get through. Once the show aired, I was about to turn 19 years old and I experienced a severe mental breakdown. I had a complete psychotic episode for about two months and my parents did not know what to do. They didn't know how to help me. So my father was so scared and so lost and so um, out of choices of how to help me that he decided that putting me into a mental institution and re rehabilitation center would be the answer. So he was forced to drug and sedate me and put me into an ambulance and I woke up in a psychiatric ward. And that's where my book starts. <laughs> me waking up in a psych ward and not knowing why or how I got there. And it took about two months for me to clear up. Um, and at that, at that place, I met a doctor. So she walked in, this beautiful doctor, Dr. Ellen Shander, and she saw right through me. And she said, you're gonna be okay and I'm gonna get you out of here. And I know you're not crazy and it's gonna be okay. And the feeling of relief was pretty unbelievable. I, I thought I was in a dream yet again. I felt very confused because even after no marijuana or anything like that, I was still experiencing severe memory loss, night sweats at this point, headaches, uh, the inability to make decisions, joint pain, uh, extreme fatigue, and confusion. So I explained this to the doctor and she said, well, have you ever been tested for Lyme disease? It sounds like Lyme. I said, oh, no, no, no. They, they've tested me for that a while ago. I've actually had a few tests. They thought it might have been multiple sclerosis and probably fibromyalgia. And she said, well, you know that 50% of the tests in America are inaccurate. And I said, no, I didn't, I didn't know that. So she sent me to another doctor and he took an array of tests and blood and came back with not only like off the charts Lyme disease, but also Bibesia, which is very similar to malaria. Dr. Shander was well versed enough in Lyme. Uh, she had a lot of patients with Lyme disease as it was, and so she knew how to recognize it. Um, and now, as she's developed in her practice, she also integrates um, essential oil healing. So I, I think she might be the first of her kind, actually, to do that. But she had so many patients who were suffering with Lyme and were in her office because they were depressed or anxiety-ridden, etc., that she knew what to, she, she put the dots together. So I started with a very intensive antibiotic protocol. And I was on antibiotics on and off for about seven years. Um, orally and intravenously, I had a port in my arm for seven months. Um, and it really did a number, of, like, obviously, on my body and my gut, and no one told me. I mean, I was told to take probiotics. I wasn't told how to take them properly. I was 20 years old. I didn't have a lot of parental guidance at the time to help structure the medication or my diet. I was, you know, smoking Marlboro Lights, drinking Diet Coke, and eating cereal while taking antibiotics and living out of a bed. I didn't know what, what was better. So every time I would feel better, after about three and a half, four months of living in a bed, literally, I would feel better and I would get up and I would go to work. I would start working, I would start working with somebody or I would start a company and I would work myself into the ground. I, I really do enjoy working. I'm a highly ambitious and driven person. Um, and then about three to six months into working, my body would start to shut down and my brain would start to shut down and I wouldn't be able to get out of bed. I wouldn't be able to remember people's names. I wouldn't be able to remember where I was going while I was driving. The joint pain set in again. I mean, you know, you feel worse before you get better with Lyme disease. You have, you, you experience extreme Herxheimer effects. So you, your symptoms flare up and then I would start to feel better and then go back to work and eventually feel worse again. And it was this crazy merry-go-round and vicious cycle up and down, up and down all the time with all these very strong and intense medi medications. Um, 
So about the 11th round or so, or 12th round in the seventh year, I was so tired. So I told my dad, I don't think that I can do this again. I'm so sick of being sick. And I don't know if I can do it. It's obviously not working. And I'm not going to live my life on this merry-go-round of taking these powerful drugs with, you know, little effect. I mean, it would feel a little bit better. After, after, the, after the IV, I felt a little bit better. And I was able to work for like eight months instead of four months. But it was not working. And something needed to change. And it was either I was not going to live like this or I was going to live like this and live a very miserable life. So he recommended it for his Chinese medicine. And I reluctantly went because I knew that that required a lot of discipline and a lot of time and a lot of patience. I was young enough to not want to take Chinese herbs all the time. <laughs> so, but I, I did it and I got really sick. I got really, really sick. Uh, and it took a lot longer to get better than I expected, but, but I did eventually get a lot healthier than, than I thought. And I wasn't quite ready to go down that, that path. And then he found a German homeopath. And at that point, I think in between the Chinese doctor and the German doctor, I had gone on another round of antibiotics, again to no avail. I had this, this, this energy that came over me that said if I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna try this and live a full life and I'm going to try my hardest to really focus and and do whatever I can to the best of my ability I'll give it one more round so I went on a very strict detox diet and with vitamins and supplements and we did detox IVs they took the, my blood out and they put it through UV lights and put it back in and I was hooked up to these different German machines and then it took a lot longer to detoxify my body than they expected. Uh, they thought it would only take uh, one month. It took two and, a, two and a half, of course, because of all of the antibiotics. When I was finally ready to move on to the immune boosting element to it, it was great because I had gotten used to eating really, really clean. I think diet is one of the most important things. And I really learned that on this, on this journey. Um, so it was the diet, it was what kind of water I was drinking, it was what kind of toxins I was ha had in my life. I mean, everything down from the, the gum that you chew, the toothpaste that you use, to the water that you cook your vegetables in, and the type of movies that you watch. I kept my toxicity extremely, extremely low and I was able to receive the IVs um, and it did um, wonders. Of course, when, when I feel better, I like to do things and so I opened a company and I opened a clothing line and started that and it was going really well. But of course, when you're busy, I didn't keep up with the vitamins and the homeopathic elements and the diet and ran myself into the ground and eventually had a really serious relapse and was just on my knees, freaked out, freaking out, crying a lot. Um, they, they found other parasites in my body and all these other issues that were going on because of the Lyme. And it was untreated for over 11 years. And when a disease like that invades your body for that amount of time without treatment, it, it really buries itself into the cells and creates little colonies inside of each and every one of your cells and, and the most, and, and the biofilm around those cells is so impenetrable. And so I was left with so many dead bodies as well from the amount of times that I had in, attacked and invaded my body with antibiotics and detoxing that um, I've weakened areas you know, my brain is definitely one of them, my joints and then my stomach. So I did everything from Ayurvedic medicine to uh, sort of astrological methods, uh, meditations, uh, different types of diets, uh, cranial sacral work, of course, Reiki, uh, 
different different types of homeopathic doctors I went to, and you know from India, from Belgium, it was it was wild. I, I, I did everything. I um, ended up in the emergency room with a 48-hour migraine, and they discovered that I had an aneurysm in my brain. So I just thanked my lucky stars that we caught it and I was forced to close the doors on my clothing business and I knew I had to make some major, major changes. So we moved to the Caribbean for three months, my now husband and I, and I knew that just completely eliminating stresses, toxins, and eating completely, completely clean and healthy and being able to meditate for a long time and being in the ocean and the salt water and being in the sunshine and having just positive energy around me was my only way at that point. So we did that. And while we were living there, I said, I can't go back to New York. We have to live somewhere else. We have to maybe California. So thank God he got a wonderful job offer out here and we moved to California. And things really started to turn around for me then because I was so dedicated to maintaining a clean and healthy lifestyle. I was keeping the possibility of relapse just so far away from me. I, there was no way I was gonna go back. There was no way that I was going to make the same mistakes. It was a combination of, of meditation, low stress, really healthy diet and keeping my mind positive and strong and knowing that I was constantly rejuvenating and healthy and healing. And you know, I, I turned to art and painting as, as I always did since I was 15. And I think that focusing on creativity, but not in an extreme way, really helped me as well. I decided to write a book about my experience and as I was starting the book we discovered that we were pregnant and I had no idea that I could have a baby. I had no idea my body was capable of it but we had a beautiful a very very healthy little girl that does not have Lyme disease so it's not acute at that time and we came out with my book and now I'm I'm talking to a lot of fellow Lyme sufferers and trying to spread awareness because this country does not understand what Lyme disease is or what it looks like because you look normal on the outside. You don't look like, you know, somebody who has AIDS or cancer. Sometimes you kind of wish that you did. It sounds horrible. I mean, I can say that because then people wouldn't say, oh, you're fine. You just buck up. You don't look sick. And it's very frustrating because you're trapped in a body that's unable to function yet you know, there are points where you can muster up some strength. And when you come back home and you're behind closed doors, you're just a crumbling mess. And I, I experienced that for most of my life. And now I'm just not going to hide it anymore. So.